right now, Milwaukee police are mourning the death of one of their own after a deadly shooting with a robbery suspect. Also, President Biden gets set to speak to the nation in tonight's State of the Union address. We'll have a breakdown of what we expect to hear. This is News 3 Now at noon. Good afternoon, I'm Mark Hain. We'll get to those stories in just a bit. But first, a storm system may bring a mix of snow, sleet, and freezing rain later this week. Let's head to the Weather Center meteorologist Kelly Slifka has a look at your certified most accurate forecast. Kelly. Yeah, we are looking at some quiet weather for now, but uh, we do have an alert day that is set up for uh, Wednesday night and Thursday. Uh, this will be bringing in quite a mix of uh, precipitation. Initially, it looks like it'll be rain and then eventually changing to a little bit of sleet, freezing rain, especially northwest of Dane County toward the morning hours come Thursday, then eventually to all snow. And we are looking at accumulation. This is going to be that really heavy, wet, slushy snow. Some of this will be melting on contact as temperatures do rise above freezing. This is going to be a sloppy system for us on Thursday. And I think the main impacts are going to be early Thursday morning when some of this will really get going. That could be impacting travel by then. And all of southern Wisconsin will at least see some uh, impacts with that system. For now, we're waiting for these clouds to get on out of here. Uh, they're not too far away. You can see on our visible satellite, you see a lot of snow on the ground there in Minnesota. But the uh, leading edge of some of that clearing is just moving across the northwestern parts of the state. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time. But I think as we get later this afternoon, we should actually see a little bit of that sun. Right now, it's mild 37 here in a Madison most locations in the mid to upper 30s at this hour. It is a bit breezy. We're watching on our future track the clouds as they kind of hang tough here in southern Wisconsin, but gradually, gradually try to thin out before the sun goes down. And we should see some clearing tonight. That'll set us up for a colder night as temperatures drop through the 20s pretty quickly this evening. We are dealing with some wind yet, and those winds will be up there at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. Uh, 37 right now with cloudy skies. We'll hang uh, right around 37. May see some of that clearing toward 4 or 5 o'clock, and then we will turn cold tonight. We'll talk more about that snowfall potential coming up in about 15 minutes. All right, Kelly, we'll see you then. Thank you. To a developing story in Milwaukee today where a police officer was shot and killed early this morning. It happened around one in the morning when police were checking on a wanted suspect in connection with a robbery. When police arrived, there was a struggle with the suspect and a gunfire exchange between the suspect and the officer. The 37-year-old officer died from his injuries at the hospital. Police Chief Jeffrey Norman is asking for the community's prayer and support. This is a time to lean in and do the work that needs to be done in our community. The violence needs to stop. The violence needs to stop. Everyone has a role in community protection. The 19-year-old suspect was pronounced dead at the scene. It's unknown if the suspect died from self-infliction or from the officer's gunfire. Meanwhile, in Waukesha, an alderman is now facing criminal child abuse charges. District 15 Alderman Corey Payne was arrested Sunday after slapping a child on the leg, leaving a mark. The criminal complaint says that Payne was in an argument with his ex-girlfriend when he struck her 8-year-old daughter. Payne was charged with physical abuse of a child and disorderly conduct. He's out on a $5,000 bond with his next court appearance next Friday. President Biden is set to give his second State of the Union address to the American people tonight, where he plans to tout what he considers economic progress with the lowest unemployment rate in half a century. But a new CBS poll finds that the majority of Americans believe the Biden administration's policies are making the economy worse. Nicole D'Antonio reports from Capitol Hill. White House officials tell CBS News the president wants to strike an optimistic tone during tonight's State of the Union address. I want to talk to the American people and let them know the state of affairs, what's going on, why, what I'm looking forward to working on from this point on, what we've done. President Biden will highlight what he considers to be his administration's economic accomplishments, including a bipartisan infrastructure law, investments in computer chips and clean energy, and a strong jobs report last week that pushed the unemployment rate to a 54-year low. It's very important uh, to show the American people in concrete, real terms, in job terms, in dollar terms, what we've done. But many Americans remain skeptical. A new CBS News poll finds a majority of Americans currently believe that President Biden's policies are making inflation, gas prices, and the overall economy worse. There are so many barriers, you know, just so many challenges that are preventing people from re-entering the workforce. This is the president's first State of the Union address before a divided Congress. The speech comes as Republicans, who now control the House, call on the president to negotiate a debt limit increase that includes spending cuts. 
He may talk tonight about the debt ceiling. And of course, the debt ceiling is a symptom of Washington's spending problem under Joe Biden. Tonight's speech also comes on the heels of the U.S. military shooting down what the administration says was a Chinese spy balloon. Six in 10 Americans say they disapprove of President Biden's handling of China. Nicole D'Antonio, CBS News, Capitol Hill. And Arkansas Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders, who was previously President Trump's press secretary, will deliver the official Republican response. A Trump 2024 campaign source confirms the former president will release a video response as well. First Lady Jill Biden is bringing a slew of guests to the Capitol this evening for the State of the Union Address. The 26-person guest list is a blueprint for what to expect. Some of the guests include Paul Pelosi, Tyree Nichols' parents, U2 star Bono, and a Holocaust survivor. Each person represents key administration priorities and accomplishments like infrastructure, mental health, climate change, health care, support for Ukraine, and a call to end mass shootings. The House Oversight the Oversight Committee is meeting to look into the Biden administration's handling of the situation at the U.S. southern border. In a memo, the White House Counsel's Office slammed Republicans for staging, quote, political stunts. It said GOP lawmakers voted against last year's omnibus spending bill that would have included billions of dollars in funding for border security. And while Republicans claim the U.S. is experiencing, quote, the, war the worst border crisis in American history, the White House says its new policies helped daily migrant encounters drop by more than half last month. Senator Tammy Baldwin is back from her tour of the U.S.-Mexico border this weekend. Baldwin visited immigration processing facilities, members of the Border Control and National Guard, along with an air tour of the area. She says that she saw firsthand the need to further invest in border security to protect communities from cartels and drug smuggling. She hopes this trip will help her work with Democrats and Republicans on immigration reform. Now to that massive train derailment in the Ohio-Pennsylvania border. Officials announced yesterday they successfully conducted a controlled release of toxic chemicals which could have caused an explosion if left unchecked. The five derailed cars were carrying vinyl chloride, which is used to make a variety of plastics. It's a highly combustible chemical linked to higher risks of certain cancer. That's according to the National Cancer Institute. As for the water, officials previously said that some runoff has been detected in surrounding streams, but they are working to stem it, and there has been no impact on drinking water so far. You can just see a haze on the water that's nasty, and you can smell it. The health effects, the long-term environmental effects, the waterways, I mean, this is bad. Federal investigators say mechanical issues with a rail car axle appear to have caused the derailment. It's unclear when evacuated residents might be able to return home to the area. A desperate situation is unfolding in Turkey and Syria after two massive earthquakes killed more than 6,000 people. We want to warn you that some of this video is difficult to watch. Countless more remains trapped as countless more remain trapped as rescuers race against the clock to save them. The region bordering Syria is the epicenter of both the earthquake and a refugee crisis. Hospitals are now overflowing with victims as the result, and many are still trapped and calling out for help. U.S. search teams are joining dozens of countries from around the world in bringing support and supplies to Turkey and Syria. Aid is rolling in from Qatar and Mexico to India and Taiwan. Rescuers from Italy brought heavy equipment to help pull people out of the debris. German rescuers are keeping an eye on social media and using sniffer dogs to help track and locate survivors. A task force from Virginia is also bringing dogs to help in the search. We train very well for it. We train often for it. Being comfortable in the rubble pile, being comfortable in loud situations. Rescue crews need to act fast. Officials say more buildings in the quake zone could crumble at any second, trapping even more people. There's more to come on News 3 Now at noon. AMC will soon charge you more for better seats in movie theaters. Plus LeBron, plus LeBron James could make history tonight as the L.A. Lakers take on the Oklahoma City Thunder. Details coming up in the Money Watch Report. You're watching News 3 Now at noon.
Prosecutor, now Circuit Court Judge, Janet Protasewicz. On the Supreme Court, she'll be a common sense judge. She believes in abortion rights, fairness for all, and protecting public safety. Janet Protasewicz for Supreme Court. Is your house frustratingly cold? Here's some good news. You can upgrade to our high-efficiency foam insulation, and the federal government will pay up to 30% of the cost in the form of an energy tax credit. Our foam keeps the cold air out, your warm air in, with lower energy costs all year long. And again, the energy tax credit covers up to 30% of the cost. Our schedule is filling fast, so call now and get in ahead of everyone else. It's time to stop freezing and start saving. USA Insulation. Surgenian's 93-year history means you pay $93 for installation no matter how many rooms you carpet. Get carpet and pad in your old carpet removed and recycled. Our competitors can't match it. Ask about 12-month financing. Local, sustainable Surgenian's. This city is magical. Let's enjoy Illinois. Come on. The best New York strips are actually in Chicago. The right ones with the good stuff. Call F Starts and Sons. Parts, sales, and service. An investment you'll enjoy. Make life easier. Experience the new Holland Compact Tractor that's best for you. Six-year powertrain warranty. Available today at Carl F. Stotts and Sons. Superior service since 1930. CarlFStotts.com. Carl F. Stotts and Sons. Lake Ridge may be a new name, but it isn't a new bank. It's one built on over a century of community commitment. One equipped with all the knowledge and resources of 145 collective years of experience. Monona Bank and State Bank of Cross Plains are coming together as one. As Lake Ridge Bank, we're doing more together for you. I'm going for Judge Janet Protas. Janet Protas. Protasiewicz? <laughs> you don't need to know how to say Protasiewicz to know that Judge Janet believes in abortion rights, fairness, and public safety. Protasiewicz. <laughs> Tonight, President Biden will deliver his State of the Union address with the economy set to be one of the major topics. The White House says he will tout the strong job market with unemployment now at its lowest level since 1969. But administration officials say he will also acknowledge there is still more work to be done, especially on inflation. A new CBS News poll shows 62% of Americans disapprove of the president's handling of the economy. LeBron James could break the NBA's scoring record and surpass Kareem Abdul-Jabbar as soon as tonight when his LA Lakers play the Oklahoma City Thunder in front of a hometown crowd. But some fans will have to pay a premium to get a front row seat to see King James's run at history. Two seats behind the hoops for tonight's game are listed at over $69,000 each on Vivid Seats. James needs 36 points tonight to get the record. His next shot after tonight, Thursday night, also at home against Milwaukee. And AMC movie theaters will soon begin upcharging for the best seats in the house. A new three-tiered ticket system starts this Friday at AMC theaters in New York, Chicago, and Kansas City. Front row seats will be among the lowest priced, with those in the middle costing more. That's your CBS News Money Watch report. For more, log on to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the CBS Broadcast Center, I'm Chanel Call. Let's check Wall Street afternoon. Are the Dow Industrials down 96 points? The Nasdaq up 27 and a half. The S&P 500, though, down about a half a point. Two new high V grocery stores are now open for business in southern Wisconsin. The Janesville store is located on Humes Road on the city's north side. It's expected to bring around 600 new jobs to the area. Another store also opening on North Main Street in Oregon. 
Next at noon, Pam has today's egg prices, and Kelly has more on an upcoming alert day that could bring snow and sleet to southern Wisconsin. And then today on Live at 4, we'll speak with director of the Marquette Law School poll, Charles Franklin, for a preview of tonight's State of the Union address. That's at 4. PBS Wisconsin presents the 2023 Garden and Landscape Expo, February 10th through 12th at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison. Join us for an exhibitor mall, photo competition, and get your hands in the dirt with stage demos and more. Plus, say hello to Nature Cat and Daniel Tiger in our kids and family area. Information and schedule at wigardenexpo.com. See you there. Memories matter. This bend on Cox Hollow Lake was one of Dad's favorite fishing holes. Crest Funeral and Cremation Service helped us make sure he's never forgotten. Making it personal. It's how you heal. We are Cress. We truly believe your memories matter. With reliable COVID-19 results in just 15 minutes, everyone is making room for Binax now in their medicine cabinet. Do we still need these pregnancy tests? Yeah, no. Out with the old, in with the number one COVID-19 self-test in the U.S. With the same technology doctors use to test for COVID-19. Binax now. Wisconsin. It's easy to take for granted how we warm up. But what if you couldn't warm up so easily? For many, it's a reality they can't ignore. Working families, elderly, disabled, and veterans struggling to keep their heat and power on in the dangerous cold of winter. If you or someone you know needs a hand up, our energy, water, and emergency rental assistance providers are working together to keep you safe in your home. No one deserves to suffer when we can help each other. On the Jennifer Hudson Show, I go way back with Yvette Nicole Brown. My part was cut in Dream Girls. So you almost took my role. Can't nobody take no role from you. Are you crazy? Plus, I'm hanging with Ron Funches. On the next Jennifer Hudson Show at 3. Tomorrow morning, we set the stage for President Biden's arrival in Dane County. We'll begin our extensive team coverage for what's expected to be a busy day. And we're tracking the storm system coming in from the south, a mixture of some rain and snow. An update tomorrow morning between 4.30 and 7. The Farm Report is sponsored by Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Well, let's check in now with Pam Yonke from the Midwest Farm Report on this great Tuesday. Yeah. All of a sudden, great. But boy, the pavement's dry out there for right now. Look, a couple slippery spots that didn't get melted down with the warm up, but uh, uh, we'll see what's up in the future. I'll tell you what's up. Over the weekend, our Wisconsin FFA alumni folks got together over in Waukesha. Now, remember, the FFA alumni, you didn't necessarily have to be involved in FFA to be an alumni member. These are just folks that recognize the good the blue and gold is doing with our young people. So, want to congratulate some of the new officers. And that includes, I got to get my eye in the right place. Bobby Joe Montgomery, she's from Wapaka. She's the new president. Also, Grant Stashik from Bondwell, the president-elect. Nick Lowe from the Stoughton FFA got selected as the vice president. And congratulations to Terry Wilford from Mishkot. She just stepped away as past president. Also, big shout out to some of our agriculture educators that were receiving awards as well as some cash money. Jenna Bergen from Chippewa Falls, Dan Robinson from Lamira, Sandra Dykes from Wyoiga Fremont, and Mariah Marquardt Walter Taylor and Hallie Kopchinski from my alma mater, Panther Power, O'Connell Falls, uh, and all the ag, ag, uh, ag FFA activities they've got going on. Mary Handrich from Denmark was the state winning educator, and Derry, Derek Pepke from Down by Elkhorn, the Outstanding Young Member Award for Exceptional Leadership. Good time had by all. I'll give you one other little sneak peek here since I got a minute, it looks like. Uh, the Cedar Crest Ice Cream winners of the ice cream flavor creation contest hosted with the Wisconsin 4-H Foundation has been announced. Congratulations to the grand prize winners up in Luxembourg, Kiwani County, Pilsen Skylighters 4-H Club created Cow Lick as the grand prize winner. Cow Lick is vanilla ice cream with a caramel swirl, chocolate coated pretzel pieces. 
Cowlick, something Cedar Crest ice cream will be featuring summer of 2023. They get 500 bucks for creating Cowlick. And before I get away from dairy, barrel cheese was down a penny and a half today. Block cheese was down a penny and a half today. But double A butter, up a penny and a half today. Cowlick, I'll have to buy you, buy you a scoop <laughs> coming up this summer. That, that is a great name. <laughs> they they deserve 500 just for the name. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's very true. All right. Thank you, Pam. See you later. Meteorologist Kelly Slivka out on the weather patio with more on an upcoming alert day. Kelly? Yeah, things are uh, fairly quiet now, and actually we've got a couple of days of some quiet weather, but uh, things will start to change going into tomorrow night, especially after midnight. So we've got actually fairly mild and dry weather, not only today, tonight, and also most of tomorrow, but it's going to be tomorrow night after midnight. We're going to see some rain spread in. As we get toward Thursday morning, we're going to start to see maybe a little bit of freezing rain mixed with a little bit of sleet, then eventually changing into some snow. And we are expecting some accumulating snow. It looks like the main impact is going to be Thursday morning. Mark that on your calendar because this snow could be coming down really heavy. There's a lot of moisture coming in with this system. The question is, when is that change over to snow going to happen? Is determined how much snow we're going to get out of the system. Either way, it's going to be a sloppy Thursday morning. That is for sure. Uh, right now, temperatures are mild, relatively speaking, for this time of the year. We still have the clouds. See some blue spots trying to break up these clouds a little bit. But I was expect more clouds than sun uh, going into the afternoon, but later this afternoon, I think we'll see a little bit of sun before the sun goes down, which is well after five now, which is nice. 35 down in Oregon and also in Stoughton uh, off to the Eastern Cottage Grove in Sun Prairie. 37 right now in Madison at the airport. And we are looking at the winds that uh, continue to be a factor. Generally about 10 to 15 miles per hour sustained. Wind chills, uh, you can feel the wind, especially if you're in the wind right now and blocked from it because it is a west wind right now. The wind chill at 30. Looking at the uh, uh, future tracks showing that some of the clouds breaking up as the afternoon wears on. You have better chances west of Madison for the afternoon hours, lesser chances to the east. We'll all clear out tonight, so we'll start out pretty chilly tomorrow morning, at least relative to, relative to where we've been. And we should see a lot of sunshine actually tomorrow. Looks to be a nice day before that storm system moves in Wednesday night into a Thursday. After midnight, mainly initially rain, mixing with some snow, maybe a little bit of freezing rain and some sleet, then to all snow, and we're looking at some accumulation. It's going to range quite widely because of that changeover situation. Uh, areas to the south and east, lesser amounts, areas to the north and west. Could be talking about four to six inches, provided that that does change over to snow early enough. So the moisture comes in after midnight, mainly rain to start off, then eventually some of that colder air, you can see waking up uh, Thursday morning just as uh, those kids headed off to school, headed off to work, a mixture of some rain and snow and some sleet, maybe a little bit of freezing rain, especially northwest of Madison, right along the Wisconsin River areas to the northwest could see a little bit of freezing rain, at least initially. I don't expect that to be a major problem, but this could be a really heavy wet snow. So some of the tree limbs may really accumulate some of that snow and you're going to have to watch out for some of those power lines as well. Uh, Thursday afternoon, a lot of this should start to wind down. So it'll be mainly impacting Wednesday or Thursday morning. We're looking at about one to three inches uh, south of Madison. You get northwest of Madison. You're talking about three to six inches plus, depending on when that changeover happens. So we do have the alert day Wednesday night into Thursday primarily. In the meantime, mild through tomorrow. In fact, we could be up to 45 before that system moves on in. We do cool, cool down a little bit Friday into Saturday, but it looks dry for the weekend. And then we're right back in the 40s. And that'll include uh, Valentine's Day. So looking fairly mild much of next week. After the storm, it's going to be sloppy, though, come Thursday. All right. We've been warned. Yeah. All right. Okay, thank you. Sure. There's more to come on News Now at Noon. I'm next. Howard has some ideas for Super Bowl Sunday in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. Looking to shake up the menu at your game day bash? If so, we have an idea that you'll love. And there's no bones about it. Mm -mm. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Race to savings now at Menards. We have everything to help you breathe easier. DuPont air filters can reduce harmful airborne allergens by up to 75%. Right now, only $289 after rebate. Keep your devices powered with high-energy Rayovac batteries. They deliver consistent performance and have lasting power. Right now, AA and AAA batteries are only $899 after rebate. Stock up on everything you need and race to savings at Menards. Save big money at Menards. 
Do you suffer with pain, numbness, and tingling in the hands or feet, commonly diagnosed as peripheral neuropathy? Are you taking drugs such as Lyrica or Gabapentin that have serious side effects and often do not relieve your symptoms? Your doctor has told you you may just have to live with the pain. Peripheral neuropathy is a result of damage to the nerves, often causing burning, weakness, pain, numbness, tingling, and the most debilitating balance problems. Our facility uses multiple therapeutic methods to help give you relief from neuropathy symptoms with no injections and no drugs. You may start seeing relief after only a few sessions. To determine if your neuropathy symptoms can be relieved, we will do a consultation to evaluate the extent of your condition. Call us today to schedule your neuropathy consultation to find out if you're a candidate for our therapy. Call today. Want a flatter, tighter tummy? Then check out new Ab EX from Sono Bello. Doctor, after my pregnancies, my body just never bounced back. I had this stomach overhang that made me really self conscious. It's not your fault. That stubborn fat and excess skin is extremely hard to get rid of with diet and exercise alone. That's exactly why I went to Sono Bello. I really trust their team of experts, and I finally got the flat stomach I had always wanted. Introducing Ab EX from Sono Bello. Remove fat and lose excess skin permanently in just one visit. Ab EX is a great alternative to a tummy tuck. So that stomach overhang that you mentioned becomes a flat, tight tummy fast with minimal downtime. Schedule your free, no obligation consultation now to learn more about Ab Ab EX by Sono Bello. Call 1 800 848 9429 or go to sonobello.com. Did you know that more food will be consumed during Sunday's big game than any other day of the year? Well, except for Thanksgiving. It's true. And while you won't find turkey and mashed potatoes on the menu, there's a pretty good chance your typical game day favorites will include chips and dip, pizza, wings, and lots of ice cold beer. And if you're looking to add something new to your lineup, I suggest you add our honey barbecue chicken bites. And to make these flavor packed bites, we mix together some crushed cornflakes with paprika, onion and garlic powder, and some salt and pepper, and we set that aside. Next, we cut up a couple of pounds of boneless, skinless chicken breast into one inch chunks. After dipping them in some beaten egg mixed with a little milk, we coat them with our seasoned cornflakes. Once they're baked, we'll drizzle them with a homemade honey barbecue sauce, and they're done. These are a nice change of pace from wings, since they're easy to eat and are better for us. To get the recipe for our honey barbecue chicken bites, simply visit our website. You might even want to make a double batch, since they'll disappear as fast as you make them. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a game-changing way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. Here's Kelly, one final check of the weather. Look, it's, the clouds are clearing in Platteville. Yeah, it looks like the uh, clouds are starting to uh, break up, at least areas to the west. Uh, so areas to the west have better chances of more sunshine than areas to the east throughout the afternoon. Temperature still mild. A little bit of a breeze, though, headed into the evening hours before those winds diminish. It's Wednesday night into Thursday. Rain initially mixing with rain and sleet and snow. Thursday morning, it could become heavy at times, and snow showers continue right into Friday. So we do have the alert day for Wednesday night into Thursday. It will turn a little bit colder on Friday. Friday, but dry for the weekend and we gradually start to warm up 30 on Saturday all the way up to 41 on Sunday. 40s continue much of next week. All right, looking good. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you back here at 4 o'clock. In the meantime, have a great afternoon.